the news that's short, sharp and shrewd. Are you talking about the podcast or me? <laughs> Both. Backhanded compliment. This is Up Late with Ben Harvey. Bit of a scandal within the DPP. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is one of WA's most important institutions. Our sharpest lawyers spend their days there putting away the worst criminals and last year a formidable ally joined them in the quest for justice. But he's just been sacked in controversial and secretive circumstances. This is him. <laughs> Hilburn is a Labrador puppy who joined the DPP last year as an emotional support doc. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Amanda Forrester, justified the $162,000 price tag by saying her lawyers were exposed to horrific material every day at work. The high workload of DPP staff, which has increased further recently due to the impacts of the COVID-19 restrictions, only exacerbates the inability to take the necessary time to recover from the impacts of repeated exposure to this material, resulting in burnout and psychological injury, she said. Sorry, let's just go back. $162,000. Taxpayers are on the hook for one hundred and sixty grand over three years because Hillman was being rented from Guide Dogs WA. That's a thousand dollars a week. It's one hundred and five dollars more than we pay junior enrolled nurses. A point that was not lost on Liberal MP Nick Garan, who suggested the money would be better spent on counselling and training. A psychologist would be more professional than a guide dog. And psychs don't fall off the couch when they try to lick their balls. For the record, Hillman is actually not a guide dog. Because he failed the guide dog test. Because he was... Too thick. Oh. <laughs> Hillman was the cover boy of the 2021 Guide Dogs WA calendar. He's cute, but as dumb as a box of hammers. <laughs> He's the Ben Affleck of the canine world. Are you like me now? Now that's not true, but why was he boned? If that's not the headline in tomorrow's newspaper, I will be sorely disappointed. I like to think Hillman was shown the dog door because he was constantly doing this. Jason, wait your turn! But apparently he's just too expensive. They cut the contract at 55 grand or something like that. It's disappointing because dogs have a rich history in helping law enforcement. Just ask Tom Hanks. Come Wait a while. Or James Belushi. Uh, or Shaggy. Oh, it's the monster. They let the dogs out for tonight's debate. Oof. The Sky News debate between Albo and ScoMo was the latest in a long list of televised matchups going back to 1984 when Bob Hawke went against Andrew Peacock. The debates used to command huge audiences, especially after the invention in 1993 of one of modern democracy's most ridiculous litmus tests. Not change for the better, it's change for the worst. God, the worm. The worm was back three years later in 1996 when John Howard squared off against Paul Keating. For all of us, a time to decide. The best thing about that debate was Channel 9's promo ad. The final showdown. The great debate. <laughs> John Howard and Paul Keating, head to head, live from the Channel 9 studios, commercial free. And exclusive, The Worm returns with its verdict. In 1996, we were arguing about jobs. We have a scandalous level of youth unemployment. When I said we wouldn't leave the unemployed behind, the long-term unemployed or young people behind, his predecessor in office, said it was a waste of money. And we still are today. Two years ago, we were told unemployment would go to 15%, but yet today, it's at 4%. We argued about who would be best to direct the economy. I offer people uh, a sense of optimism and a sense of change. Just like now. After everything we've been through as a country over these last few years, I am incredibly optimistic. We talked about the problem of debt. We have a foreign debt which is now over $180,000 million. Our debt has risen because it had to. We talked about the importance of small business. Because he let's, won't get the government off the back of small business. Let, well, first of all, we've cut taxes for small business down to 25%. Uh, many people did get left behind in various sectors of the economy. We grappled with industrial relations. Industrial relations is the last frontier of change. Scott spoke about the industrial relations changes that were rejected in the parliament that he said he will resurrect. One of the major friction points in 96 was Medicare. And to reduce the Medicare rebate to 75%. And when I told him that three years ago he wanted to kill Medicare off, he said, oh, I wasn't going to kill it, I was only going to change it. 26 years later, we're still banging on about it. Labor does the big reforms. It is often Labor. They started Medicare as well. 
But it's always the Liberals and Nationals have to work out how to pay for these things. It's not just similarities with 1996. One of the major friction points in 2013 was... Stop the boats. Why didn't you support turnbacks then? You weren't proposing no, that we, then. No, you we were, were not proposing. I'm sorry, you, you we were, were. Not it was our policy. In that year, we also debated the future of democracy and the importance of strong leadership. We can't afford another three years like the last six. Nine years on, we're still there. A stronger future, an uncertain one. But I believe we can have a better future if we have a better government. Yeah, Groundhog Day. If you win a debate, do you win an election? Doesn't seem to be the case. Bob Hawke was judged to have lost against Peacock in 84. He remained Prime Minister for another seven years. In 2013, Rudd beat Abbott soundly in the debate, but was kicked out of the lodge a few weeks later. A short time ago, I telephoned Tony Abbott to concede defeat at these national elections. And John Howard lost just about every debate he appeared in. But he was Australia's second longest serving Prime Minister. I'm winning any more where I can't lose. Being brought down in 2007... You think you can do this to me? ...by a man who was a master orator. Ah! This f***ing language. He just complicates it. Elbow will be following up the debate with a campaign opener in WA. Apparently Labor's campaign hasn't started yet. The official campaign launch seems to be happening deeper and deeper into each campaign. Elbow's kicking his formal bid off for the lodge on May 1 in Perth, which sounded like a good idea at the time. And then this happened, which means Labor might not have its deadliest weapon. Mark McGowan is in isolation until at least Tuesday the 26th, after one of his family tested positive to COVID-19. He tested negative Wednesday morning, but if he gets two lines any time after this weekend, he might have to stay at home and watch the launch on telly. He and 8,000 other people. Big jumping cases in WA, but some people still really don't want to wear a mask. That's what happens at a Wanneroo nail salon when a customer refuses to mask up. The teenager said, I'll spit on you, and the nail technician who asked her said, you spit on me and I'll do you for assault. And that was enough for this to happen. Coming of age moment for that young lady. When you feel within yourself that you're like physically and emotionally mature enough to handle a scrag fight. WA is plumbing the depths of COVID boganity just as New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet ditches masks altogether. Elbow, after two weeks of getting hammered by the press pack, you'll feel right at home when you get here. If you'd like to watch Up Late with me, Ben Harvey, search for The West Australian on YouTube.